Welcome to The Basement, everybody. I'm your host, 90s Basement Kid, and today marks a very special mega episode of the show. Now, when I first started doing this, I asked people, what do you want to see me talk about? And by far, the most overwhelming response I got was more Batman. So here we are, and just in time for the 80th anniversary of Batman himself, I'm going to be here talking about more or less all of the Batman movies. Now, I will say Batman, specifically as a hero, is my second favorite superhero. I still think I'm going to have to give a Spider-Man a slight nod. However, I will say that I think the potential for great storytelling is much higher with the Batman character. It very much is able to tell multiple different types of stories with Batman. You have everything from the Adam West era of the goofy, silly, sort of kind of fun superhero to everything like the Dark Knight that's been coming on since the 80s that is the one that people recognize the most today. So I'm going to take a moment to talk about the movies at large and just how the series has evolved over the years. First up, we have the classic Batman, the Tim Burton version. Now this to most people I think is the quintessential Batman film. It came out the perfect time when superhero movies were just sort of making an inkling when you know we had Superman finally come out and you had some other ones like that, but this one seemed to be the first kind of big motion picture superhero film. It features a masterful performance by Michael Keaton as basically the best performance that anyone has done as Batman. It features Jack Nicholson's Joker, which is pretty much the quintessential form of the Joker until later on when Heath Ledger arrived. The thing that strikes me about Batman as a film is the fact that it's so not kid friendly. I mean, I watched this movie as a child when I was about five, and when it was shown to me, I was horrified by scenes like this. Ah! Or like this. What if we say no? Nobody wants a war. <laughs> if we can't do business, why, we'll just shake hands and that'll be it. Yeah? Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> now, in comparison to modern films, it is pretty much relatively tame, especially now that I'm older. However, I've always been struck by the effect that this movie particularly had on me in showing how, quite frankly, ratings for movies are kind of bullshit, man. Uh, you know, the fact that a movie like this can have a rating such that it did, I think is pretty laughable, just at the fact of ratings. I'm not saying this movie should have been R or anything like that, because it really shouldn't, but I do think that, you know, if you're looking for movies that you don't want children to watch, I feel like this one would be high on the list, you know? It's got a lot of graphic depth, it's got a lot of adult themes and stuff like that, but, you know, the fact that they embrace this sort of thing is what makes the movie great. You know, it still definitely teeters around to being a family film, there's still things in it that are very much kid-friendly and make it sort of palatable for youngsters, but, it's got a lot of hard and heavy shit in it that I think is why people like it. You know, this Batman kills people. This villain Joker kills people. Tim Burton's Batman stands out for being a unique take on the story and the mythos of Batman. It takes a kind of dark turn on what's otherwise at this point had been a silly story, at least on video, <clears throat> or at least on the screen. So I think that is why it responds, people respond to it so well. That is why people respond to it so well, because of the characters and the combination of seriousness that the story was told. Next up, we have the sequel, Batman Returns. Now, I spoke earlier about Batman not being kid-friendly. This movie is absolutely not family-friendly whatsoever. This has basically got kinky s and It's got violence, not quite as much as the original Batman, but it does start off with a pretty brutal murder, to be quite frank. Uh, you know, but even with that, I think it is a very interesting movie to watch. You know, the Danny DeVito kills it as the Penguin, pun intended. You know, I think Christopher Walken does a great job as the villain as well. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman is outstanding. This might be her best performance she's ever done in any movie, quite frankly. I think she really nailed the Catwoman. You know, the aesthetic that Tim Burton gave her was just perfect for this type of movie as well. The only real complaint I would have about the film is it seems like in a lot of ways, Batman takes a backseat to the rest of the story. But really, I can't complain. It's a fantastic movie. I didn't watch it 
all the way through until recently, a few years ago. But I really can see why people enjoyed it and why it's got a cult following for what it is. Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed up like Batman? Because he is Batman, you moron. However, it is unfortunate that Tim Burton did take risks with this film, and unfortunately it paid off for the story, but as far as his career goes, it did not. They shit canned him from the projects, and they spot in Joel Schumacher for the next film, Batman Forever. Oh boy. Now, I'll admit, as a child, I did very much like this film. I thought it was very enjoyable for the reasons I'll mention in just a moment, but rewatching it now, I have to say, this movie kind of sucks. Val Kilmer as Batman is one of the most unprofessional superheroes I've ever seen in the film. Look at this shit. Look at him. He could be killed right now any, very easily. Anybody in this crowd could murder his ass. But he doesn't care because he's got to try to fucking bust a nut and Nicole Kim in the whole movie and not really be good at it. Oh, why? Because, you know, then he's got to fucking let Robin's family die because he can't fucking push people out of the way quick enough to admit he's Batman, you know? And what happens? Fucking family dies and you get this shit. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through. Now, what I will say about this film, the good things about this movie, because there are good things, Tommy Lee Jones and specifically Jim Carrey give masterful performances in this movie. They are scene stealers, each and single one of them. Specifically, Jim Carrey, who quite frankly should have gotten an Oscar nomination for this performance. I think that is the under, that is kind of the thing about this movie that does work. There's very much an on-set competition between Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey about who could basically steal the show in each scene. And quite frankly, they're the only ones to have any sort of I consider competent acting in this movie. Well, I shouldn't say competent acting, that's a bit rude, but they're the only people to have great acting in this, to really make this feel like a real movie, whereas, you know, Val Kilmer's Batman is just this. Despite some of the shortcomings of Batman Forever, Warner Brothers decided, hey man, we kind of like Joel Schumacher, let's give him another chance. So, what do we get? One of the worst movies of all time, Batman and Robin. I will say though, however, I do enjoy this movie because it's such a fucking shit show. It just, you know, it's kind of like the Spider-Man 3 sort of vibe, you know, a room vibe, Troll 2 vibe that this movie has. You know, I will say though, Arnold Schwarzenegger gives maybe his best performance of any movie besides, you know, Predator and Terminator. He really brings it to this role. Yes, he's straddled with one-liners like this. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! And like this. All right, everyone, chill. But quite frankly, everybody in the movie is. In fact, I would say the line, the one-liners in the movie, as shitty as they are, is the only thing that makes this a reasonably entertaining film. You know, they really should have called this movie Attila the Pun because, quite frankly, that's all this movie is. You know, they do a good job of, of you know, creating this world. However, it just so, the movie's just so fucking ridiculous and just so many things happen and it's so pointless. I mean, you know, even the, bat, the last movie, Batman Forever had the Batman nipples, but, you know, you know your movie is bad when it's pretty much called gay propaganda, delighting, and just everything about this movie is just bonkers in the 90s, and it looks like you should have taken ecstasy before you saw the movie. Maybe you'd enjoy it that way, quite honestly, because that's fucking how bad it is. But I still enjoy it for the moments it has. Just scenes like this. <laughs> I hate when people talk during the movie. And then the creme de la creme of shit. This. One million dollars. Two million. You don't have it. Three million. I'll borrow it from you. Four million. Five million. That's a utility belt, not a money belt. Six million. Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. After the dust settled from the release of Batman and Robin and the stench was in the air, it was decided that the Batman series needed a fresh start. The mythos needed a reboot on screen and it needed a fresh pair of eyes on the material. Enter Christopher Nolan. Now Christopher Nolan was brought in to make these movies serious again. And not, I don't mean just serious in like a dark tone. I mean serious in a real life manner. Alas, we got Batman Begins. Now Batman Begins, when I saw it, shattered my expectations of how good a comic book movie could be. Not only was it the best comic book movie that I had ever seen at the time, it is one of the best movies that I had ever seen at the time, and it still is to this day. The Christian Bale, the intensity he brought for his performance was staggering to see. Yes, people like to make fun of the Bat Voice, and it became 
more apparently obvious that it was going to be relied upon than the other movies. But the way it was used in the first film, I actually liked. I thought they used it just in the right time. I felt, you know, the performances were all outstanding. The writing was outstanding. It did a very good job of making you feel inspired by the Batman character in a way that you had not seen in any of the other movies. Michael Caine is Alfred possibly a show stealer, quite frankly. I think he is the best Alfred we've ever seen in the movies. I know, you know, Michael Gaw was great as the original Batman. I think he still visually is what people think of as Alfred, including myself. But I do have to give Michael Caine his credit on this movie because he did a great job of being the kind of sidekick you would expect Alfred to be in a non-physical fashion. After the smashing success of Batman Begins, it was clear that Christopher Nolan was the right kind of director to take these movies into the future. He's not only is he one of my favorite directors, but I truly believe he's one of the most outstanding directors of all time. So people were very excited when he was brought on to the sequel, The Dark Knight. Now, The Dark Knight, not only is it the greatest superhero movie of all time, I actually think it's unfair to call it a superhero movie because of how good it is, but the performances in this movie are brought to the next level. The action is brought to the next level. This movie is the Heath Ledger show. He carries this movie with his performance of the Joker. It is one of the most influential movies, not just of all time. This movie set the platform for which other comic book movies will be using for the years to come in the, an attempt to be taken seriously. While this movie was not recognized for the Academy Awards at a time of its release, it changed the way in which the Academy Awards operated, which is something that very few movies can even pull off, let alone a comic book movie. Hell, even Debo steals the show in this movie. This movie is great. I can't give enough praise to the film. You know, people like to say things about it now because it's been a while, but quite frankly, when this movie came out, it was the hottest thing at the time. It stole the pop culture zeitgeist and it basically change the expectations people have for not just comic book movies, but movies in general. After the earth-shattering success of The Dark Knight, it was clear that something needed to be done to continue the series. They were left in a bind, unfortunately, from the sad death of Heath Ledger and his performance being so great. So what did they do? They came up with a new story that would take Batman into the future and basically be a proper send-off of the character. Enter The Dark Knight Rises. Now much has been said about Dark Knight Rises over the years. It is definitely the weakest of the trilogy. However, I still think it is a great film. It definitely has some problems, with, you know, there's some major plot holes. So big, in fact, you can find a drive a Batmobile through it. But I do think Tom Hardy as Bane is outstanding. I think the beginning of the film is one of the most exciting, heart-pounding intros. Not just these movies, but any movie. The effects are outstanding. The tension is good. Granted, the ending kind of falls flat and the actual climax leaves a lot to debate, but I personally loved it. I think it was a great kind of visual exercise, masterful stroke of directing by Christopher Nolan, who you could tell wanted to do more with these films, especially this one, I think. I do think the major issue with The Dark Knight Rises is it feels rushed. It does feel like something that it could have taken six months to a year longer to kind of fine tune and polish. But having that said, I still think it's a very effective film and it does a lot of things really well. Stay tuned everybody, because up next, will be the second part of the Batman series video, and I'll be speaking about the other movies and even the TV shows in the series. Peace. <laughs>